Hello. So we are back. Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday. And I'm back from holiday, but two days, Monday and Tuesday, was quite busy, you know, a lot of jobs. So let's fix something, yeah. The first, I just want to update. You remember I made like a few videos about the Samsung T585? You remember? Okay, lost my phone. You remember these tablets with a very no fault, yeah? With uh, no picture on the screen. And always is the cable. The connect, the cable is coming out from this connector, yeah? But not this time, yeah? So I just want to update this just to don't do same things what we did. So what we did, so the connector was fine and we said, you know what, is the screen. So even if I plug this, replug the connector back, was still no picture. And obviously we said, you know, is the screen. So we bought a new screen. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, I did found before. Once. Yeah. So this is the second time when I found this fault. Actually, the cable from this connector is coming out you know because the cable is flexing here and the battery is flexing the cable is coming out but most of the time from here I found one from here and I said you know what let's check first to be sure this connector is fine and after that I'll replace the screen or to replace the screen you have to take out the digitizer and after that you take out the screen now the second problem yeah the second problem you don't have access on this connector. No, not from this side. Not from this side. So the only access on this connector, you have it from the other side. You have to take out the screen, the digitizer. I know it's very stupid, yeah? So here you'll have something like that. You have a piece of plastic. Piece of plastic, which is part of the body, yeah? So you don't have access on that connector. What I'm doing, I just want to give you an idea. I'm melting this. I have a solder iron special for plastic. This one is special for plastics and I'm melting things. Yeah? So all what you have to do, you have to melt here a space and you can access the connector. And obviously I melt this, I took out this uh, piece of plastic and I did have access on the connector and yeah, that was the problem. Okay, if we check now, it's working fine. So keep in mind, yeah, keep in mind, just to don't buy the screen, you know, like us. So it's displaying, it's working fine, okay? But like any normal person, he will see, well, he will see something like that, he will try to take out the screen to access this connector. It's more easy just to melt the plastic and you have access from this side without, you know, it's a high risk to take out the digitizer and screen. Also, the screen is stuck on the frame with some glue on the side. See, it's, it's, not, it's not very easy. It's not very easy. Okay, let's put this back. And let's start something else. I don't know how it's on the other countries, but this and here are very, these are very, um, you know, are very common tablets, very common. Probably everyone has one of these. Okay. Good. Let's learn something today. Okay. Let's learn about uh, fixing uh, power supplies, monitors. I think it's a power supply issue here. We don't know yet. This, yeah. Okay, what is this? If I'll show you from the back, you'll know straight away this is some kind of monitor. And it is a monitor, it's a LCD one, we have here the high voltage phase. But 
Yeah, these are cheap on these day. We are selling like monitors, like old ones with like 15, 1, 5. But this one is from uh, some cash machine. This this monitor. And cannot be replaced because of the size. So this go inside of the machine. So we have to fix this. And uh, find a problem. Let's have a look what it's doing. Why I'm saying... I believe it's a power supply issue. It's because I plug the cable. Power cable. And all what it's doing is this. You can see the this light here. Okay, it's flickering. I don't think that's normal. I don't think. What do we have on this side? Do we have like power cable and VG connector okay so let's open this and fix it you can have capacitors yes you can you can have capacitors you can have many issues like partial sh shorted power rail you can have like a You can have a few things, yeah. Even the the microcontroller from the VGA board, which is starting the power supply, even that one can be faulty. Many issues. Let's try and fix it. I believe the man already tried and. F and uh, he goes somewhere or somewhere else try to fix it. I'm not sure about that. Okay, I think I have to take out these connectors from the screen from the LCD high voltage uh, connectors. Like normally, it's not worth to fix something like that. This is a LCD monitor. They are cheap. It's not worth to be repaired. But this one must be repaired. Because it's from some, uh, I told you, some cash machine. I don't know. Some, I don't know. Okay, so the connectors are out. This is out. And that's all. Let's put this on one side. And let's get concentrated on this one. Yeah. So what do we have here? We have the power supply and the backlight. Yeah. And the control board and the video. Yeah. That's what we have here. So what components we can recognize here, yeah? Like here, I can see we have the high voltage area based on the fact on the fact is near to the power connector we have four pins here in plus and minus which is mean here is the rectifier bridge yeah here this square probably from the main switching mosfet yeah we have the opto device here you can see here to here to here so this is the secondary the low voltage and here where are the high voltage outputs for the lights for the backlight 
So if this array is for the backlight here, this is the low voltage, this is the high voltage. And this is the video board, yeah? But the video board can also start the power supply. It can be an interesting repair. Hopefully the picture is better now. What we should check first? We should check what he's doing. Let's plug the, plug the cable. The cable is plugged. Let's take the multimeter, volts, volts, okay, minus. And what we can see here, the output of the transformer, here you have three pins, that means it's a double diode, and this is the output. And the output is 15 volts. 13, 15, 13, 11, 10. Okay, that's not normal. This is one output. Do we have another output here? No. This thing is doing the same. Yeah. So we have a power supply with only one output here. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. This high voltage thing. Okay, so also I suppose this is 15 volts, 14, 13, 11, 12, the voltage is changing, let's try something, let's see exactly how it's changing, let's see, where is my microscope, microscope, Microscope is not on screen. Oh, it is on screen, sorry. It is on screen. They saying offline. No available USB driver found. Because it's not plugged in. Okay, let's plug the microscope. Maybe we can learn something useful. Who knows? My mouse is not working. Okay, starting. Hmm? It's on. Let's switch on DC. Channel. DC. DC is on. Good. Let's see. We have ground and the main voltage. Okay, what's that? So here is supposed to be a line. Here is supposed. You can see the signal. Let's change the. Let's change the. Oh, one higher. Okay, that's better, yeah? So that's what we have on the output. Where we supposed to have like 12 or 14, I don't know. But why suppose 12? Because it's a standard thing. So I suppose here it should be 12 volts. So what the power supply is doing? It's going up. 
the voltage goes down yeah let me show you so you can't see the mouse yeah you can't see the mouse okay what do we have more here because we should have a uh, low voltage for the video we do have a switch in power supply here a second one and that's the output and the same thing nearly the same things nearly But our main problem is the output where should be a straight line yeah because it's DC it should be a straight line I have something like that now a good question is why do I have something like that this is a very low frequency spikes yeah I don't think our capacitor, capacitor are not are not doing something like that. So let's say if you have low capacity, you will see the switching frequency from the high voltage area. You can find it, find it on the secondary here. Yeah? But not this. This is low frequency. Channel one is showing me like 2.7 uh, uh, kilohertz. That's mean uh, 2,007 Hz here, that's the one, 2.7 kHz, yeah, which, which is very, very low. This is a with you. There is no way this signal can be from a switching, uh, you know, like a normal switching power supply. The working frequency, sorry. So what do you think is the problem? Can be a protection, yes. This kind of oscill oscillation here can be from a protection. Let's say it's protecting, it's going up. Something is wrong, it's, we have a sh uh, shorted power rail and it's dropping the voltage. But I don't think so. And let me explain why. Let's check again the signal. That's the output signal. And actually the switching, the only part where the power supply is switching, when it's going up, it's going up. And after that it's coming slowly down. That's the capacitor getting discharged. If you have a short, it will go straight down. Yeah? It will not go like, like, like that. Like slowly down. And after going slowly down on some point, it's starting again. So I don't think we have a short. I don't think. It can be a capacitor. Maybe. Let's check the board here. Yeah? It's very simple to check if we have like any blow up capacitor. Okay, this area is very dangerous. You have around 300 volts then, I think. Let's see. And we have 18. Okay, it's getting discharged already. That's good. This is a simple basic power supply. You can find it on the monitors, you can find it on uh, TVs, like simple TVs. It's a basic switching power supply. You can see the input here. Yeah? The input, we have a fuse, you can see the sign fuse here. Uh, you have a, I don't know the English name of this thing. After that you have the coil, the, this transformer, which is for uh, to keep away whatever is coming from the like different noises, you know, line noises. And also to keep inside all those, uh, the, the frequency from here, you know, all the noises. After that you have the rectifier bridge, you have the high voltage capacitor. 
and the mod this is the minus probably yeah it's the minus plus l so it's coming here to this uh, well it's coming here plus that's plus 300 it's going inside the transformer here it's coming outside from here and from here another coil here and it's going to the transistor the switching mosfet it's a classic one very simple very simple also the here probably have a cheaper module who will uh, will, uh, will be driver for this uh, mosfet and the voltage for this one is taken from the transformer you see that this is the second coil of the transformer you have a diode and you get DC here from here you have a resistor you have a capacitor this is important this capacitor from here yeah this can be gone can be and after that probably here you have like around 12 volts and it's going here good it, it's so simple this is this is basic it's a it's, it's a beauty to see like a basic power supply because you know you can fix it whatever is there let's check the caps okay exactly what I told you one more time the high voltage fan we have the output we have the double diode here here we have a you know this is a switching power supply we have this coil and this chip here probably it's making 5 volts for the logic board we have the high voltage uh, area for the backlight yeah but the capacitors are fine that's bad okay I'll not check the capacitor the capacitor are fine so we don't have like any blow up capacitor around here the next step let's provide a voltage let's provide the 12 volts with the power supply and let's see what happens yeah let's supply the power This is simple, you have only one power supply, a 12 volts I think. Let's get our power supply, 12 volts, 12 volts, ground, and plus. Taking one amp, one amp, no, 180 milliamps, 180 milliamps, but look here yeah look here exactly what i told you remember i told you it's not a short because it's going down slowly the wave wave shape is going down slowly that means the capacitor get discharged if you have like a short or something is getting too much power the capacitor will get discharged instant, instantly you know so look what will happen if we su supply 12 volts the output of this you can see the LED, the LED is on. You can see that. So the flickering thing, yeah. Sorry, I'm not touching here. Uh, the flickering thing is not from the logic board. It is from the power supply, yeah. Okay. So we, do, we don't have nothing to do with the power, with the logic board. It's fine. We don't care about that. We don't care about the backlight here. We don't care about the 5 volts, this small switching power supply here. And our problem is here on the high voltage and low voltage. It's not even on the low voltage, it can be. Okay, let me explain you. You remember we spoke about the power supply? 
how this high voltage, you know, this MOSFET, how he knows, you know, how he can know the voltage from output, how, how he knows to output exactly 12 volts. <coughs> hmm? How this switching power supply knows how to change the what is the name you have the the wave shape obviously a small wave shape here yeah here will be low voltage on the output yeah a longer one will be high voltage on the output so uh, this part knows yeah knows what will happen here because of this optical device optical coupler i think it's on the english name this one yeah here you have a led inside it's a it's a black thing here you have a led just keep in mind you have a led here and here you have a photo transistor just to separate the grounds so you, you will not get electrocuted here okay so that's how this knows what voltage is here yeah so this driver of the mosfet he will check whatever the signal is coming here and it will switch more or less the mosfet and then that way the voltage here will get changed this is a very precise thing yeah and uh, if this is reading only this uh, if, if the driver of the MOSFET is reading the this opto device here opto coupler I think that's the name the one who it's outputting to the LED power it's a chip it's a chip and you will believe it's a transistor but it's not let me open and show you maybe I should show, I show under the microscope one second I think it will be, will be more easy to understand what's going on here yeah so what do we have uh, I wish I, I can have like a higher working distance so here is the MOSFET yeah and here is the driver okay and here is the opto coupler here we have the photo transistor here we have the led yeah but the led is getting powered yeah by this guy okay this one you will believe it's a transistor but it's not Actually, it's a chip if with three pins, and uh, you can have a look together. I'm trying to make this longer, you know, for you to understand. But on a normal situation, I will go straight there and I'll replace that thing because most of the time that's the fault. When you have something like that, probably first I'll replace the the TL431. That's the that's the one. And you think it's a transistor. Well it's not. I believe it's a 431. Yeah, this is a AS431. Yeah, it can have different names. It can have different names. Let's see what it's doing, yeah. Let me find a Google. TL four three one. Now let's see how it's working. Aha, uh -huh. I found it. One second. 
yeah so we have here look that's the that's the chip but we have an application yeah yeah give me one second Okay, so if we get like an application and the nearest application from here with our schematic is, is, I try to find exactly the same uh, what we have here. Yeah, the nearest one is this. Okay. So that's what what we have on this TV. Yeah. So one more time, the our optocoupler. Yeah. The LED. You see, so this is uh, is reading the voltage. This is the output. This is the, that double diode which I told you we have a double diode. So it's, it's reading the voltage, 12 volts out, you can see. Uh, it's reading the voltage and based on whatever it is reading, the voltage goes up and down, yeah? It's outputting here. The voltage to the LED actually is not outputting; it's, it's 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 shorting to ground. So on that point, the circuit will get close like that. Yeah. Plus LED minus. Okay, so this is a very important, very important thing. You'll find this TL431 and like most of the power supplies. Okay. Now I know the theory. It's 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 boring. Let's try. See practical how we can check this thing. Yeah. Same. So let me think first how we can check. Okay. Give me a second. Check out. Uh, okay. She telephone, da? I'm on the. Da. Okay. How we can check? Because that's a chip, you cannot check that chip. That's no way how you can check that chip. Okay, someone was ringing me. One second. Okay. It's a chip, you cannot test it with a multimeter, yeah? Let's try to test it on our way. Oh, 
or how you will check yeah just tell me how you will check how you will check yeah no um how we can check how we can check Very simple, yeah? We have the 12 volts. Let me connect the ground. As ground. We have the oscilloscope and we can read the signal from the optocoupler, yeah? From this opto device, we can read the LED, yeah? LED. And I will use 12 volts on the output. Okay, what do I want to do now? I want to do a lot, but I need a wire. One second, if you give me one second. I need a wire. We cannot find a wire. Huh? Don't worry. That's the easy way. So you have to be to pay attention because that's the way how you can check if the reading of the voltage and the output into the high voltage area is good yeah so you have to pay attention that's very important wait for the soldering iron It's not hot yet. Just wait one second. So this is the 12 volts. This is the output of the double diode. Yeah, the output of the switching transformer. You have double diode, and it's it's changing from the AC to DC. Yeah, and here is supposed to have like uh, 12 volts DC. And like how I said, I will come with the power supply. To the 12 volts DC, yeah, yeah, okay, and uh, let's try with the oscilloscope to read the output of this LED. Okay, so we have some voltage there 10, 11. 12 13 is going down okay this is good you see 12 and it's getting change 11.9 is change so on 11.9 it's open yeah, it's 11.9, the voltage is high, as soon as the voltage is reaching 12 volts, 12 for something, the voltage goes down. Okay, so my TL431 is working. Okay, that's bad. The way the voltage is going up to 16. Okay, let's check the photo transistor from the other side. Yeah? Ohms, the multimeter, and this here. Do we have this is the high voltage area? 
we have 26 kilo ohms I still 26 let's spin this and we have 73 kilo ohms and we're going up on the voltage 12 no it's not changing so check that yeah 11 volts going up up to 30 and we have same value 73 kilo ohms nothing changed let's spin this Twenty six kilo ohms with thirteen volts going up on the voltage. Eleven volts, same thing. Twenty six kilo ohms going up. Fourteen. Twenty six kilo ohms. So here is changing, but here on the input of the driver is not changing. So it's a miscommunication between this part and the high voltage area the communication which is made by this uh, photo thing yeah? let me check straight on the pins maybe you have a track issue 72 26 okay going down Twenty six we seventy. That's weird. I want to check something else. Yeah. I'll switch on volts. I'll go here on the LED, yeah, not with the oscilloscope, and I'll check the voltage. Yeah, so let's see how this is changing. We have 10 volts and uh, it's zero there. Up 12 is not changing, it is changing 1.1 more, and the voltage is constant. Okay, so how do you explain that? Yeah, this is the LED. What I'm checking here, you have the optocoupler, this is the LED. 1.1. Is do you think it's still low? 1.1 for the LED. Can be. And if we are going with the voltage down, it's 12 volts there. Yeah, 12 volts going down. 11, and the voltage just goes. You can see on the on the power supply here. Yeah? Uh, no, on the power supply on the multimeter. The voltage is gone. So here is changing, yeah, from 1.1 volts to zero. But on the other side, it's nothing changing. So we can have like a dead optocoupler here. Or. Or my TL is not good enough. It's working, but like partial working. That's a weird fault. I can swear, probably never I found an optocoupler faulty. Let's try something else, yeah? Let's try something else. Let's try, yeah? So I'll take my power supply, I'll go with the current down, yeah, let's say on the power supply, let's say 12, 2 volts. Two volts, yeah. And let's apply voltage to the LED of the, of the, of the, of, to the optocoupler, and we can read the output on the phototransistor, yeah. So on the photo transistor, let me switch on ohms. We have twenty-six 
we have 25 kilo ohms uh, I don't know which is plus or minus it's not doing anything, it's not taking current, why? minus Yeah, of course not. Okay. Let's try. Let's try. This is plus, this is minus. Of the LED from the opto. Upload and it's not taking anything. How this is possible? Plus, no, plus minus. Yeah, it's on the other side. So, on the other, if I try to put power on the LED, my limit is 1.1. 1 .1. You can see there, that's the limit 1.1. 1 .1. 1 .1 volts. 1.2. Okay, let's check the output. One more time. Minus. Plus. Yeah, 1.2. It's not even point. I think we have our opto device dead. Let's take it out. Because with 1.1 volts should be, you know, the photo transistor should be open. But it's not. It's closed and it's not driving the current. That's the one, the black one. Maybe I'm wrong. Like how I told you, you can find that on any power supply. Let's say this one, yeah? You can see it here? Here. Yeah. I told you. So let's replace it. Let's replace it. Yeah, that's the one. On one side you have the LED, on the other side you have the phototransistor. Okay. Let's get this one out. But this will be hard to be sold. Let me find another one. From another power supply board. Yeah. Here you have three. You have one, two, three. You can see. Now let's take one out. All are the same. It's not. It's nothing to worry about. Okay, let's replace it. Okay, that's the one. You have a dot, so you know which the position is.
Okay, everything is soldered on place. Nice soldiers. Let's check now. Let's check now. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so again 12 volts. Let's check the. Let's check with the multimeter the output of this, which now it's same 25 kilo ohms. Okay, that's good. And plus here. Okay, 10 volts, 11, 12, and it's changing, but not too much. And I don't know that's normal, can be normal. 25 kilo ohms, when I'm reaching 12 volts, 12.5, it's changing, you can see, it's 12 kilo ohms. Yeah, so what do you think? That's, that's mean, I'm, I'm, I'm checking on the photo transistor. Trust, yeah. Hopefully, I'm checking right. No, no, yeah. One more time. Now it's right. So we have 10 volts. What do we have there? 74 kilo ohms. You can see 74 kilo ohms. We're rising the voltage, rising the voltage on the secondary, rising the voltage 12, 12.5. And it's going down to 276 ohms. Yeah. Here on the op on the phototransistor. On the other side. Because it's a semiconductor. 274 ohms. Yeah. So that's mean everything is working how it should. Now we can take the power supply out and this is something more, Im more important because that's the only way how you can find how many volts has a power rail. So on the moment when this get changed, yeah, like on our case from 74 kilo ohms to 200 ohms, that's the point of the voltage of that power rail. So you don't know what voltage has this power rail, but when it's getting changed, you know that's the point where the voltage should be. You know what I mean. And yeah, that's weird. I was swearing is the TL431 is faulty. I was nearly to swear, you know. I was nearly to bet. That's a weird case. Yeah, let's check now. Yeah, let's plug the power. Let's plug the power. Come on, goes there. It's not going there. Let's plug the power and let's see what happened. Power. Ah, uh, what do you think? Look at the LED. Yeah. And uh, the voltage, ohms, volts. The voltage minus plus 12.1 is stable. Yeah. This is repaired. Probably now if we connect the screen, we can have picture. But it's not, uh, you see, it's like solid green. It's not switching anymore. 
but again, this is a weird thing, you know, because I don't remember, I don't remember, it is more fair to say like that, I don't remember to find uh, optocoupler faulty, like this one, this is an optocoupler, I think that's the name, I'm not sure. On my language, I know I know what's the name, but not in English, but I think that's the name on English, optocoupler, coupler, yeah? Let me check. Up to coupler, yeah, that's the name. Yeah, that's the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's the that's what we replace. You see the opto things with the LED and photo transistor. Okay. And now we can test it with the screen. But again, yeah, whatever we are diagnosing here, we have no schematics, yeah? So again, this can be interesting because with this basic knowledge, you can fix any power supply. Just using these basic things, yeah? Checking the output, checking the switching on the optocoupler. Even the laptop power supply are the same, the phone's power supply are the same, all are the same. I think we spoke before about the uh, power supplies. Okay. Okay, everything looks fine. Looks fine. Let me use the screw to keep this in place. Because you know, it's easy. When it's dead, it's easy. When it's dead, it's more easy to find a fault. The problem is when you have these weird kind of things. So, you all what you can see, I mean, when you, when you take the job, all you, what you can see, you can see the LEDs flickering, this LED from here, yeah? And you think, probably, you know, probably the, 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 the logic board, yeah? The logic board is faulty because the LED is coming straight from that chip. Maybe, that, maybe that's faulty. Or if it's the power supply, what can be on the power supply? Plug this, and we have the Dell sign and picture. Okay, yeah, it's fine, it's okay. You understand? So, one more time, let me repeat myself because this is very important. Just using these basic things like basically checking. Checking the power rail, checking the the output of that TL431, and checking the input to the high voltage thing. You can you can like separate the issue. Yeah, that's that's the first step to find exactly what is your problem. You have on the high voltage area. Yeah, because look, like on this case, you can have the voltage of that output of that phototransistor good. Yeah, there is, it's not putting the voltage, sorry, it's, 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 uh, it's changing the resistance only. Or maybe the driver is not reading that uh, phototransistor, yeah? So you have a driver issue. That's, that's why it's important to know exactly what is your fault. You have that driver is, is gone, or the coupler, or the 
TL431 or okay so uh, I will stop now the power supplies are nice yeah it's interesting to be repaired if, if I told you from where I come on the power supplies like 20 years ago or 20 20 yeah Twenty years ago, when the the color TV comes out, and um, was a lot with switching power supplies and faulty, was on that uh, moment when they switch for like uh, power supplies, linear power supplies with uh, thyristors, and they switch to switching power supplies. On that moment, and I was was no no way on that time to find to find you know like to find the parts of the power supply and it was changing or well, removing the power supply and uh, modifying and make a another power supply and I work a lot because you have the you, on that point you have the the high voltage was like 140 or 150 volts and after that you have the low voltage things, 9 volts, 12 volts. I learned a lot on that on that moment. Even now I remember that telephone can TVs, yeah? You have an, you open the TV from the back and you have a power supply here on the metal case. That power supply was uh, with the, uh, the, the main uh, high voltage transistor was a BU... 208 I remember that you can find that's something what you can find but when the, that MOSFET was opened by a driver which was a a double t restore anyway that part you couldn't find it so you, on that on that time you cannot repair the power supply just because that's that small thing or some terrestrial, a fast terrestrial, a fast switching terrestrial, which we, we can't find. And we have to remove that power supply and put another one and make a modification. Yeah. Okay. But thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you like the video. And see you on the next one, yeah? Bye.